Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is episode four in the design series uh, where we're focusing on how to design a bike using Onship. Um, again, if you haven't seen any of the first episodes, I'll put a link below. Uh, make sure you kind of go back and watch those because we're this is more of a continuation of where we left off. So um, yeah, if we kind of jump straight into it, we're going to cover assemblies um, and a little bit, we're going to touch on near the end in context um, modeling and that'll be uh, that'll feature quite heavily in the next episode after this as well. So if you've watched the first three episodes, um, you should be at this point where you've got a bit of a front triangle for this orange stage six Evo frame um, that we're using as a project for now. Um, this was all assembled or, or designed and modeled within a single part studio. So like I say, link back to the previous episodes two and three specifically that uh, cover how to get to this stage. And from here, what we're gonna do is essentially talk about why it's, well, how assemblies are used and why it's better to use assemblies. And then also the advantages that that gives us in terms of modeling and making revisions using in, in context modeling later on. So let's jump straight into it. So we're going to use the top tube as an example. So this is obviously really, really crude basic shapes, um, kind of just to block out the model as a starting point. Um, but obviously this doesn't look anything like the finished product. So we want to try and refine and, and revise this to get closer to the end, the end result. Um, so basically what we're going to do is instead of designing all of the parts, the top tube, down tube, all these individual components within one single part studio, we're going to create an assembly. We're gonna bring all of the tubes in individually and add those into the assembly. The way you would make the bike, you know, the frame would be we done exact, you know, exactly this way. It is an assembly of lots of different tubes and components. So we're gonna set up the document the same way. Uh, and then we're gonna take the top tube as an example and we're gonna model that uh, in context. Um, so, all we've got currently is the existing part studio. This is exactly as it was uh, in the last episode. So basically what we're going to do, and, and this isn't the way that we would do it normally, um, but it's a good way to try and help kind of warm up to the more advanced models uh, methods that we'll cover later down the line. Um, so we've got our front triangle part studio. Essentially what we're going to do is just duplicate this. Um, so you'll see it pops up here as a copy. Uh, all of the same properties remain. So we're gonna rename this and we're gonna call it um, top tube. So this is still a part studio. We can still sketch and extrude and do all those things in here. Uh, and it's carried over everything that we've got. We don't need any of this stuff. Um, we'll keep maybe the first layout sketch, but all the rest of it can be can be deleted. So this, we can delete that. All the miters we can delete. We don't need those. And any relations that we have later, I mean, there are no other relations in the document, so it's, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, tube shelling, we don't need to do that. We're gonna remodel the top tube. So. Um, what we can do is take these out, head tube, down tube. We're just looking for anything top tube related and we'll leave that. Okay, so take all this stuff out. Okay, so, and we'll take that loft out as well. So essentially, if you watch the previous episodes, like I say, this is where we got to. We lofted this top tube um, from some basic shapes. So actually what we're going to do this time is try and do this a little bit more advanced um, and make it a little bit more accurate in terms of what the tube actually looks like. So we've imported a, a side view of, of part of the frame and you can see it's definitely not just a rectangle. It's it's a lot more um, complex than that. So we're gonna try and replicate that as much as we can. Um, so again, we're gonna keep these layout sketches for now. Um, we're also, you know, if you think about the way the frame is gonna be made, you're gonna have one tube and it's gonna be cut down for each size of, of bike. So we wanna start when we're designing the tube with our extra large configuration, our biggest configuration. So it's a really important that you don't miss that step. Uh, and you can see obviously the, the, the frame changes throughout. We covered configurations in a previous episode. If you don't know or aren't familiar with that, make sure you go back and look at that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna set, to, set the configuration to the extra large size. So we know that that tube won't need to be bigger for any other bikes. Um, and then we'll start to, to kind of piece together our, our design. Um, so the first thing we need to do, we should have a side view of the frame yep and again it's it, this side view is fixed for one size i think it was more similar for a large yeah so it sort of overlays quite well so we're going to have to use a little bit of creativity on, on on this model for example um but we can turn that on and off as we need it so what do we want to do we want to model the top tube we've already got these initial sketches here so we may as well use those um as a as a basis to kind of 
sketch off. Um, so we can we can either leave them there or we can replace them. Uh, we may as well leave them there. We'll start some more sketches. It makes life a bit easier because you can just start using that sketch as a plane. Um, so again, don't forget to reference the tube. Um, I know we can only see a portion of it here. There's lots of images online, or so if you're you know if you're designing your own bike, then you you'll probably have either an image in your head of what the tube might look like, or you might have a concept drawing that you've done. Uh, you can import all of that and use that as a, as a guide, but for the purposes of this, we're going to use this photo and, and try and guess the, the rest of it. So we've got a rectangle that's roughly the right proportion. Um, what we're going to do is start off with a center line down here, uh, and then we're going to use that to sort of guide what we do. So from, oh, actually we need, uh, we kind of need a, an edge to go off. So I'm just going to use that. I'm going to take those constraints away so we can get it the full height. Uh, make those horizontal. In hindsight, we might have been better to just start this from scratch, but we'll put these in um, this way and this way. And then we just want these to be construction lines as well. We don't want them to affect our, our loft that we're going to do later on. So, so yeah, crudely, I guess, we're just going to draw the tube shape in here uh, roughly, and we know that it kind of comes along this kind of profile. Again, if you're if you're not familiar with it, you should probably sketch along the view normal to the sketch plane. It makes life a little bit easier. So we can throw some dimensions in here. Let's call this um, four millimeters. Let's call this section maybe eight millimeters. Um, this line, uh, which will be fairly consistent, we'll make it maybe 13. Uh, and it looks like there's something funny going on there. We'll make that constraint against that line. Okay. Uh, this must be mated uh, against the midpoint. Um, there's some something a bit weird going on there. So I'm actually going to just delete these two lines uh, just to fix that little issue. So if you if you don't know if you've got two lines here, you know we know we've got this uh, construction line, and then there's also a solid line there, but obviously it won't highlight. If you hover over it and hit select other. It'll give you a list of all the stuff that's hidden behind. That's a really useful tool. So you can see edge of ske sketch one highlight. So that's the one we want to select that and delete it. Um, yeah, it seems to be that this there's a, uh, there's a point in the sketch behind. So there's a good reason why it's maybe useful to start a sketch from scratch rather than uh, let something sit there in behind. So I'm going to make that vertical um, and reapply those dimensions. So we're going to say, yeah, 7.5 seems about right because we're going to want to mirror this across and we want a 15 mil for example uh, 15 mil width there um, so this obviously is floating in space so we just need to put a dimension on here let's give this height um, let's make it 14 millimeters okay so in order to mirror this we're going to want to pick a center line um, so mirror and it prompts you to select the center line which is this one and then select the entity so we're going to want this one we want this half line so again um, select other like we highlighted a minute ago you can see it highlight there uh, and you can see them start to pop up on this other side so you know you're on the right path um, and don't forget to select this bottom one um, so again that select other tool is in there and you can just click anywhere and that kind of accepts it and accept the sketch so what we'll go ahead and do is just turn that sketch off now um, and you can see we've got this kind of area here uh, I don't think that'll give us any problems later having that sketch in behind, but we'll see. If we if we do get that, we'll we'll figure that out. So we're just going to repeat the process um, that we've just done, but on the front as well. So again, this time what I'm going to do differently is just start with a a rectangle, and we can. In fact, that kind of gives you the same thing. Um, we're going to make that construction, and then we can almost turn off that other kind of sketch from behind it now. So we're just going to repeat the process again. We'll go normal to. We want this sort of straight line. Then we have a flat section. Then we know what comes in and it comes down and across. Hopefully this line isn't mated to anything because we've turned the sketch off in the background. And again, we're going to want to re recreate some of those measurements that we want to keep consistent. Nope. I want to that line. And I think that was 7.5. Uh, we can always we can always check. Yeah, 15 mil, 7.5. Um, this, I believe, was 14 millimeters. Uh, I think we, it kind of doesn't really matter. Let's make that a bit taller. Um, obviously, because we're going to loft this, the software will figure out the differences and, and make this all smooth, hopefully, afterwards. So 
and we'll go eight millimeters there. Okay, so we've got one half of the, the sketch. We're gonna do what we did a second ago, and that's mirror that across. We can use this as the mirror line, and then we're gonna select all these parts, and then, oh, on this bit. And again, use select other to find those hidden lines. Select other, yeah. Okay, so again, we're just dealing with the top tube, just like we did in the first version with this. This was essentially a, a loft um, between two profiles and we use this center line to guide it. So we're just gonna repeat that process um, and loft this. So find our loft feature. We can do it as a solid, it's not overly complicated. Select the first profile, scroll back, select the second profile. Uh, and then we're gonna use path and use that center line like we did before. Um, we're gonna increase the sections up to about 10 just to give it a bit more continuity and accept. Okay, so now we've got this top tube here. Um, we don't have any other parts, so unlike the first couple of um, episodes where we modeled all the parts of the front triangle in one part studio, which you can do, the software allows you to do that, and it's okay for maybe one or two or three parts, but as soon as you have more than three parts or components, it gets a bit confusing and a bit messy, which you'll have seen if you watched the previous episodes. So it's nice to have a single part studio for, for one part, um, and, and that's why we kind of do it this way. So we're gonna park that top tube there for now um, because we've got nowhere to put it. Uh, so what we're going to do is, you know, we've got a part studio that looks like an assembly, but it's not. It's We've sketched everything in, in this and you can see the, the feature tree is already getting quite long. Um, if we had a really complicated part, we wouldn't wanna have more than one part in this feature tree because it would just, it would just be so massive and so long and gets kind of confusing and difficult to make changes. Um, so we're gonna start an assembly. Um, so hit new and create assembly down here. Um, we're gonna rename that. Uh, we'll just call that general assembly. Now, unlike a part studio, you can't sketch in this, you can't do you know extrudes, features, all that kind of stuff, but you can import components, drawings, um, surfaces, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is insert. Um, we look at this part studio, it's called FT part studio, we'll drop that down. Now it's important that we configure this to whichever size bike we're gonna make. Um, so we'll select extra large, hit generate, and that'll give you all the, it'll basically revise all of these components that are in this part studio to the configuration that we've selected. So what we want to do as well, at the minute we've, you'll see this little toggle is just parts. Um, you can, you can toggle on sketches as well. That's not selected as by default, um, but you wanna make sure you select on that purely so that you can get your first sketch in there. So with bicycle design and assemblies, you, you need somewhere to put all the components and tell them where to be. So generally the geometry sketch would be the, the first place I would look for that. So we're looking for our kind of master geometry sketch to put in there. So um, these for some reason aren't generating previews. It's a little bit easier when you can see that. So we can see master geo. So we're just gonna click that. Um, now, because my mouse is still within this little drop down, the, the sketch actually comes in and it sits exactly on the origin in the same orientation as, you, as it was created. If I hover my mouse onto the screen, you can see that I can move it around. Um, that is useful when you start importing other components, but for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna leave my mouse hovered over here and select the tick. It means that this geometry has come in exactly on the origin in the same way it was in the part studio. Now I can still click on it and move it, um, but it gets kind of confusing because it's now not on the origin. So I'm gonna undo that. And to stop it from moving, I'm just gonna right click either here in the feature tree or here on the actual sketch, and I'm just gonna highlight fix. Fix is different to mates. Um, mates in an assembly obviously are a relationship between two parts um, or multiple parts, and you can control those in some ways. Um, when you fix something, you're just telling it to that's where it's gonna stay in space, no matter where it is. So if I've moved this off to the side and fixed it there, that's where it would stay. Um, so mates can be useful, but um, fix for this is, is probably the, the best way to do it. Once we get a little bit deeper down the line and, and start bringing in different sub-assemblies, maybe the front triangle and the rear triangle, we'll, we'll not fix those, we'll use mates because we want some relationship between those where the main pivot would be so the suspension can compress and headsets can, you know, steer tubes can turn, all that kind of stuff. So we would use mates for those rather than, than fixing it. So what we're gonna do now is we've got our geometry there. We're now gonna insert some components. 
So we're going to go to the front triangle part studio again. We're going to select extra large because we should have selected extra large for this uh, geometry. You can actually, if you hover over it, you can see it pops up and uh, it shows you what the configuration is and it's extra large. So we've selected extra large here. We're going to generate those parts and then we're going to bring in the parts that we need. So we've got our bottom bracket. We've got our down tube, shock mount. We use the revolved head tube, main pivot, seat tube, brace, top tube, and that should be everything. Uh, so we're just going to hit tick. Uh, and just like the geometry, these parts, uh, if you hover over them, you've got the option to fix. So again, these aren't actually fixed. We can move them out of the way. So we don't want to. We don't want to do that and, and have them disappear. So we just click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, and we're just going to fix them all in place. Um, you could mate them in place but actually there's not really any benefit to doing that because there's not once they're held you know it's a welded component it's a welded assembly of tubes so once it's there in place you know so mates don't really have an, an application here in my opinion and um, so i just fix those and then we've got you know essentially we've got a front triangle um that that's fixed so this is our general assembly the reason we've got this front triangle now fixed and, and in here is we want to redesign the top tube now we've already done that we've started with this top tube so what we're going to want to do now is take this part. I mean, you could finish it. You could um, add some radius edges. You know, you could shell it out. Um, let's do that, for example, so it's a little bit more realistic. Um, you know, it's still a full full length tube and, and actually renaming the parts, which was good practice if you watched some of the previous videos. So let's call it top tube, top tube and we'll call it full length. Um, okay, yeah, so you could add some radiuses and rads. Let's do that as well. Say a one millimeter rad everywhere. Softens it up. I guess there would, there would naturally obviously be a, a rad on each one of those edges. Um, anyway, it looks like we might have missed one. Uh, nope, it's all good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is add this top tube into our assembly. Uh, we couldn't do that before, so in this part studio we've no option, you know, because everything was modelled in there, we don't have the option to bring in parts that have been designed in different part studios or if they've been designed in a different document, um, which is quite useful for shared parts, common parts, bearings, derailleur hangers, anything that is kind of common across lots of different parts or, or products. So, you know, this is where part studio is great, but it starts to have limitations when you're designing more than one component. So that's why we use general assemblies or, or assembly um, documents. So we're going to want to hide this top tube, suppress it, hide it, doesn't really matter. And you'll see obviously these miters are here, um, which were based off the original top tube. That We don't need to worry about that now because over time we're going to replace every one of these tubes with the kind of more refined version. Um, so we're missing a top tube. What we're going to do now obviously is just like we did with the previous parts, we're going to insert. Um, now it's coming from a different part studio, so we'll click in. This is our top tube. We want to make sure we select the extra large configuration. We're going to generate that. And now we've got top tube. Now, when we click on this, it's going to bring it in in its situ. So exactly where it was designed, um, which is where we want it. We don't want to move it around. So keep our mouse hovered over here and accept that. And then the first thing you want to do is go in again and just fix that. So now you can not you can try and click and drag, but it won't move. So you can see straight away, we're starting to get a frame that's a little bit more like the finished article so like like we see here um in the in the images so we can go through and do that with all of the tubes and all the, all of the components um but a useful kind of and what, what we're going to cover in another episode is is in context modeling um and what does that mean it essentially allows you to make changes to a component so the stop tube for example or the head tube or the down tube but you can make those changes in the context of this assembly so i'll show you what that means now if we right click, if we wanted to cut, you know, for example, here's a good, here's a good example. If you want to miter this tube, um, when we mitered the tubes in the first couple of episodes inside the part studio, you know, it recognized that there was a, a head tube right in front of it. So it, it, you could just use that to, you know, to, to detract from the top tube to give you that miter. In an assembly, it doesn't necessarily, you know, this part doesn't necessarily know that that's there. Um, it doesn't know that top tube's there, it just knows that it's it's free space because again, this top tube is its own component, if that makes sense. You know, if we go into that single part studio document, it doesn't see a head tube, it doesn't see any other tubes. All it sees are the sketches that we had 
to create it. And, and actually, if some of those weren't there, it probably would still would still work. So what we want to do is we want to edit this top tube in the context of this assembly. So we right click, scroll down, edit in context. Now the screen's changed. What's actually happened is if you look at the tab at the bottom, we've moved from our general assembly into the top tube part studio. So we are editing the top tube. Again, you can see the, the feature tree where we created the actual top tube itself. So it might look like we're in the assembly, but we're not, it's, it's grayed out. It's just showing you that this top tube is being used in context, it's being used in that assembly. So we can now reference some of these parts to make changes. So if we wanna make this miter, we can't actually select this tube. Um, it won't let us use that to, to make any, you know, to make any changes to the tube, but it will allow us to reference it to create surfaces. So what we're gonna do is offset surface. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna set the distance. Now we don't want there to be a distance, you know, if there was five mil, it would, ex you know, extrude it or uh, offset it five millimeters out there. We just want a replication of, of this uh, surface. So we're gonna hit zero as our offset distance, hit the tick, and now we've got this surface that's representative of the head tube and it's it's in the it's in the part studio. You can see it here as, as part of this part studio. If we were to, uh, this is your, your assembly context, um, manager so if you if you were to flick to zero you know back to none um you know it's it's no longer editing in context so we want to make sure we keep that on and we're going to split this top tube uh, and we're going to use this sur this surface that we see here so actually you can you can select it from here and obviously you can keep the surface if you think it's useful or if you're happy for it to disappear then it's sacrificial as part of this um, split so we'll accept that and we're left with this part here so what you what you want to do then obviously is delete that part and that disappears. So we've made the first miter, the first cut, we've done it within the part studio. So let's go back to the assembly and you can see it's carried across here. So we've got the top tube, it's been mitered to the head tube um, and it's it's exactly what we, what we set out to achieve. Again, you'll see that some of the miters in the down tube have changed or well, they haven't changed, I suppose is the whole point, but they should now change to reflect the top tube because it's been redesigned and changed. Now that won't happen because all of this was designed within the part studio, all of those miters, you know, this part studio doesn't know that we've created a new top tube. And more importantly, if this part studio was our, our main driver of the construction geometry, if we decided now to go in and change that geometry and make the bike longer or shorter or change the length of the head tube, the this kind of top tube doesn't know that because you've got its own sketch in here. So the only other option you would have then is to go in and replicate exactly the changes you made in your master construction sketch and, and repeat that in these sketches. That, although it would work, it's very, you know, there's a lot of risk of, of room for error in, in that. So we don't really want to have to do that. What we want to do is have one main master set of geometry and then that that stays fixed and everything drives off of that. So that's what we're trying to do with 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 this um, setup. So, and we, we can do that by using in context modeling. So we'll get into that in a lot more depth in the next episode um, because it's it's once you've figured that out and, and got more confident with it, it makes modeling a, a lot more straightforward and a lot easier and it makes your models a lot more robust to, uh, to changes and revisions as well. So. Um, so we'll go ahead and finish this top tube. Um, so again, we're gonna edit in context. Context one was the context that was created. So we can keep that because this is still the same front triangle assembly or general assembly. So to, to do the miter on the seat tube, we wanna repeat the process. We're gonna offset the seat tube surface. We're gonna select zero, and then we're gonna split the top tube using this new surface. And we'll let it disappear. If the surface doesn't disappear, then generally it means there's a fault. Uh, it means it, it's struggling to split the surface. It's struggling to split the part, and that can be for a number of reasons. Maybe it doesn't, you know, completely break the the, the part, uh, or we'll we'll cover that in another episode. But if it doesn't disappear and go um, kind of transparent, it means there's probably going to be a fault. And also, split to the title will be highlighted in red to tell you that there's a there's an error. So we're all clear on this one. So we're going to accept that, and then we're going to delete this part. Um, and we should still be left with top tube, top tube full length. Um, anyone that kind of watched our, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll flick back to the assembly to check that that's all worked. Yep, that's all fine, so we're good. Um, anyone that watched our 
episode two, I think it was, where we covered configurations. You can also now configure that tube. So I know we've got it top tube and we've called it full length. This obviously isn't full length now, it's been, it's been mitered. So you could create a new con um, configuration and you could call it um, full length, if I could spell. Oh dear. And then you could also have a, a configuration that's mitered. Um, and what that would allow you to do is pick these features that we used to miter it, um, and then you can either suppress them or unsuppress them. So it allows you to flick between the two. If you needed to export that tube for a supplier, you know, you, you might want to be able to export it in, in full length rather than the mitered version. Uh, and then you don't want to have to be rolling the, the model back up and down the tree to do that. So you, we can go in and basically select all of these surfaces and click on unsuppressed and that'll add this in here. Um, hit done and we just do that for all of these um, features that go into the miter. Um, okay, so for example, I'll show you at the front. So this will be the top end. So, and this is always a little bit, I always get a little bit confused. The quickest way is to just flick them off and, and see what you get. Um, and if we scroll this down, you'll see now under our configurations, we've got another option. So we're currently on full length. If we click onto mitered, you'll see that it flicks and, and that miters the head tube junction and again flick back to full length and and it's back to full length so and again those configurations should pull through when you're in your assembly so you, you could possibly you know you can see now this is maybe by default uh, coming through with the full length so we might want to change that configuration and um, so you'll see here change configurations and we're going to want to select that it's mitered we'll generate that and then it, you'll see that it's already, it's already disappeared so we just accept that uh, okay is there anything else um that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, if you have any questions about it or are a little bit confused or want to know, you know, how to model something differently or, or any of that sort of stuff, get in touch. Um, and like I say, we're going to cover in context modeling in a bit more depth in the next episode. Um, and, and I guess that once, once we've got a grasp of that, then essentially the world is your your oyster and you can really start to piece together a finished frame whether it's a hardtail or a full suspension frame or whether it's carbon or you know different materials and um, when we get into modeling a say a carbon front triangle instead of an aluminium one you know that that actually all the work we did in the part studio where we modeled everything as one it kind of comes back into its own because we, we that's how we would we would start on on a project like that so um, yeah if you have any questions let us know. Uh, hopefully these are beneficial and you enjoy them. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.